On the night of May 4, 2007, a worst-case scenario was taking place. A large EF-5 tornado was heading straight into the town of Greensburg, Kansas. The tornado would take a direct path through the center of Greensburg, scattering millions of pieces of debris in the air. The next morning, surveyors would come across some extremely strange damage. Household objects were found stuck in trees. Something like this is hard to believe, but when we consider the fact that they were traveling over 200 miles per hour, the amount of kinetic energy contained within these lightweight objects is astounding. At 405 and 243 joules, the license plate and fork contain more kinetic energy than a 22 caliber bullet and more than double the kinetic energy of a Major League Baseball pitch. And that's why this happens. Other strange examples include this record stuck in a power pole, straw stuck in a tree, a card stuck in plywood, and corn stuck in a car's radiator caused by a nighttime wedge near Pampa, Texas. The Pampa, Texas tornado would loft millions of pieces of corn into the upper part of the storm known as the hail growth zone, resulting in an extremely rare type of hail. Corn hail. Something similar but even more incredible would happen with the infamous Western Kentucky EF-4. Like a giant vacuum, the powerful tornado would suck up debris, and in Dawson Springs, Kentucky, it would pick up a photograph, sustaining it in the air for over two hours, finally dropping it in New Albany, Indiana. This photo would travel over 128 miles and was still in amazing shape. As impressive as that is, tornadoes can lift a lot heavier objects. Earlier this year, some of the most mysterious tornado footage was captured by my friend Max Olson. His video starts off with the tornado crossing the road right in front of him. As the tornado continued into the town, a strange light appears. Oh, huge tornado right there. You can hear it. The light then orbits around the funnel and is briefly hidden from view, but would soon re-emerge on the north side of the tornado. It would continue to orbit the tornado, getting higher and higher with a maximum height over 400 feet. This was the last moment the light was seen as it appeared to be falling fast. Given the location of the tornado, whatever this mystery light was, landed in the center of town. After watching Max's footage, there was one question I had. What the heck was that light? Was that a vehicle? Is that even possible? Good thing I have an engineering degree and I can answer these questions. In order to suspend a vehicle mid-air, the force from the wind of the tornado needs to oppose the weight of the vehicle. And as it turns out, it would take about 164 mile per hour winds to suspend a vehicle like a truck, which sounds like a lot, but given the fact that the rolling fork EF4 was found to have maximum winds of 195, sustaining a vehicle mid-air is in my opinion well within the capability abilities of the tornado. Another famous example of a vehicle being tossed by a tornado happened during the 2011 super outbreak in Smithville, Mississippi. This beast of a tornado would toss a red pickup truck so violently that when it came into contact with the town's water tower, it would leave a permanent dent. The same tornado would produce other strange damage. One of the homes would have their curtains pulled through a crack created by the tornado. The Smithville EF-5 was also known because it produced some of the highest end tornado damage ever documented, pulling up underground plumbing and reducing a funeral home to a pile of dust. But even still, the worst tornado damage ever documented goes to the infamous 1997 Gerald F-5. Because this tornado was nearly stationary over the Double Creek Estates, nothing was left. Having such a strong tornado not move at all is almost meteorologically impossible, but clearly it's not. Sometimes what's strange is what's not damaged, like this home in Georgia that took a direct hit by an EF-4 and sustained almost no damage. Or this windmill that was right in the center of a relatively weak 
tornado. Who do you think is going to win, the tornado or the windmill? The windmill really didn't seem to mind, and because of that, the tornado was pissed and wanted a second chance at destroying a windmill, and it almost did, significantly bending this next windmill's blade. But nope, the tornado was not strong enough, and the windmill won, again. After doing some research, I found that windmills can operate in winds up to 50 miles per hour, but are actually built to survive winds up to 150 miles per hour. All I gotta say is, good job windmill engineers. On the night of March 2nd, 2020, a long track supercell would put down multiple tornadoes, one of which was going right through the heart of Nashville, leaving a long track of devastation, but one building in particular stands out. This industrial building that was totally leveled except for the back door, which was still standing strong, resulting in this iconic but strange tornado damage photo. Considering this happened at the height of COVID uncertainty, I cannot imagine how devastating this tornado was for the people of Nashville. About a month later, a historic tornado outbreak would take place on Easter Sunday across Dixie Alley, where this EF3 in Georgia would shift an entire house off of its foundation, leaving the house still fully intact. It appears to still be hooked up to power and reminds me of some other famous tornado damage. Further to the west, a two mile wide EF4 would be on the ground for over 60 miles where it would directly impact the Wade residents. Despite destroying their home, dishes and the cabinets would be untouched. And do you see that sitting there? A pound cake in a glass container survived the tornado. After thinking about this pound cake for way too long, I think I've figured out why it survived. The highest winds within a tornado actually happen on the south side of the tornado. But those were not the type of winds that came into contact with the Wade household. What happened was that the low pressure of the tornado came close enough to the home, the higher pressure air inside the house tried to fill the void of the low pressure within the tornado, blowing out through the roof of the home. This type of tornado damage is much different than what happens on the south side of a tornado and explains things like this and this, and is also why the dishes within the cabinets were untouched. But that doesn't fully explain why the pound cake was able to survive out in the open. So let's take a closer look. Because the pound cake was sitting in the center of the kitchen counter, the counter essentially acted as a windscreen for the vertical winds created by the tornado. When I add in the streamlines of a plate subject to vertical winds, you can see that there's an area of stable air right above the counter, which is acting as a safe zone for the pound cake. After doing a ton of research on the topic, I was confident Mama's pound cake was the strangest tornado damage of all time. And then I came across this, another cake that remained untouched despite being in a home destroyed by a tornado. Maybe the true explanation is that tornadoes are gluten-free.